I'm just getting it out, I think. I'm just getting it out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Welcome to the podcast, the Just Getting It Out podcast with me, Nathan T. Today, it's the Oklahoma Sports Recap episode. Today, we're going to be going over what happened this week with the only three teams in Oklahoma that matter. Oklahoma Sooners, Oklahoma State Cowboys, and Oklahoma City Thunder. Sorry, Tulsa. Our Oklahoma football teams had a rough weekend, both losing pretty rough fashion. OU, man, I don't know what has happened with them, but they have just decided they're going to suck this year. I I don't know how they got this bad in one year, like what happened. You can tell that the offense doesn't produce as highly as they did with Caleb Williams. Um, get, Dylan Gabriel's pretty decent, but he just doesn't seem to put up the same amount of production that uh, Williams did. Yeah, they just got... Molly whopped by Baylor this weekend, 38 to 35. Uh, they had a a running back named Williams. He's a fifth year junior. I don't get how that works. He had so many yards, 192 yards and two touchdowns against OU. His entire career before this, 456 yards. He he literally had almost half of his entire career rushing yards against OU. Not good, guys. Yeah, really for OU, this year's a wash. They have they lost three games in a row. Started to make a little bit of headway. They beat Kansas, and then they beat another team. I don't really know or care who it was, but they beat another team last week. And then this week, they just decided, eh, we'll drop one to Baylor. Baylor's pretty good, but we'll just drop one to them. I kind of get into this weird space when my teams start to lose. Like, once you lose about... Once you've lost more than two games... I don't really root for you to win anymore. I'm kind of just hoping you lose every single game after that. I don't know why, but I have this weird thing where it's like, as soon as you start losing, I want to see how far you can fall. OU has shown they can fall pretty far. Um, They're now at a four-loss season, and that's, that's like the worst I've seen in my lifetime that I remember. Ever since I can remember, OU's been good, but this is not, this is not it. You know, obviously, they're still going to make a bowl game. If you look at the SP projections on ESPN, too, I don't know why. uh, I don't really know exactly what they take into those projections. But on those SP projections, OU's still, like, 15th. So, like, even with their crappy record this season, they're still projected over the long term to be a really solid program. So it's really nothing to worry about. It's probably just going to be rough this year. Next year, their defense will get a lot better with Venables recruiting. Um, So, yeah, just... You know, bunker down, get ready. You know, we'll probably play some crap bowl game and probably dominate because it's going to be some team that is nowhere near the league of OU. Um, But, you know, we'll make it up next year. We'll do it. Oklahoma State Cowboys. Go Pokes. They lost pretty badly. Yeah, they lost bad. OSU now sits at three losses. That's about typical for OSU. Like, towards the end of the season, you'd expect them to have two or three losses. We're getting pretty close to the end now, so they just got to try to win out. Their schedule up ahead is actually pretty easy. They uh, they have Iowa State next, which, I mean, uh, you'd think Iowa State would be an easy game, or at least just a decent game that OU, OSU would probably win. But for some reason, OSU always just likes to just hand Iowa State victories every single year. They'll be like, oh, we haven't lost a game all year? Iowa State, here you go. Now we'll, we won't make the playoff. They just do it every year. It's kind of expected at this point, so don't be surprised if they lose on Saturday to Iowa State. Then they play o- OU the following week. That'll be a good game. It's always good, even though Bedlam is kind of whack this year with both teams kind of sucking, but it'll be good. It'll be all right. And then West Virginia. If they lose that, I'll be very disappointed, but you never know. Um, OSU will hopefully make it into a good bowl game. With Spencer Sanders out, it's kind of a bad situation. Their offense is just not the same. Honestly, with him out, they might lose the rest of their games, to be completely honest. Like Iowa State, they're always sneaky and they can get those wins. OU, typically they're good. Not so much this year, but they just got their quarterback back, so they should be pretty decent. And then West Virginia, you know, hopefully they win that, but you never know. Speaking of Spencer Sanders, I helped him buy a computer and some monitors at Best Buy. Nice guy. Um, yeah, spent about four hours with him. Good good dude. He had just got an NIL deal, I think. I think 
He didn't explicitly say it, but I'm pretty sure he did. He was there with a couple buddies, and we just spent like a couple hours going through all the monitors and stuff. And I like basically told him like, "Hey, you can get this one. It's got all the fancy stuff, but it costs like a thousand bucks. Or you can get this one. It's like four hundred bucks." has most of the same features, you know, it's going to be a little worse, obviously, but it, it's got a lot of the same stuff, 400 bucks, so he got two of the $400 ones, I think, and something else, he got something else, too, like some type of computer, I don't think it was anything crazy, though, and yeah, good dude, I think he tried to get a Best Buy credit card, but I don't remember, but yeah, hopefully he gets better, hopefully uh, they can come out of this season with at least some hope, and you know, just Work forward, get some good recruiting, work towards a better future, all that good stuff. You know, their their biggest issue for Oklahoma State is their turnovers. They had four turnovers and four like two of those turned into points for Kansas. So if you're going to be throwing interceptions on the first two drives and you're going to have other turnovers on top of that, there's really no chance of winning. So... They just got to work on that. Be careful with the ball. They're getting outscored by a large margin the last two weeks, 85 to 16 the past two weeks. That's the amount, the amount they've been outscored by Kansas State and Kansas. Also, why are you getting mollywalked by Kansas teams? We're Oklahoma. We have to represent. We can't let Kansas beat us at any. No, they can't beat us at anything. We even get more tornadoes than those bitches. Fuck Kansas, okay? Fuck them. Unless you're from Kansas, then disregard all that. We love you. The Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunderdome. They are rocking and a rolling. They lost three straight to start the season. I That was kind of awesome. Uh, I really wanted them to keep that streak going, but they didn't. Then they went out and they won, I think, four straight. You know, because that's what they do. Shea Gilgis, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. However you say his name, it's kind of hard sometimes. Shea Gilgis Alexander. There we go. He has been on beast mode. He is averaging like 33 points a game. He is like a slinky. He can just like weave and wind through people like nothing. He has the most drives for the second season in a row. He's leading the league in drives per game. He is just a beast. And the dude just, like, hits shots that shouldn't make sense. He'll hit, like, the... He'll throw a, a shot up, and then it'll hit, like, so high on the backboard. You're like, how does he figure that angle out? It's, like, twisting and turning in the air, and you're like, how does that work? He's shooting, like, 50% from the field right now, which is just crazy. The only thing is, his three-point shooting could be a little bit better. I think with Chip England, that could really improve over the next year or two. And then um, after this year, you know, you will get Chet back. We'll hopefully get another good prospect. Maybe we'll be terrible and we can get Wimben, Wimbenyana, Wimbenyama. That, that, maybe we can get him. And if we get him and we have Chet and then Poku can figure his stuff out and become actually decent, this team would be unstoppable. We'd have the triple threat in, down in the middle. We'd have Giddy posting up dimes every single way. And then we'd have Shea just slinking him through, making up these insane layups, dunking it in people's faces. This team, the starting five for the Oklahoma City Thunder, if they get Wimbenyana, Wimbenyama, uh, they will be unstoppable. The starting five, at least. Then we got to work on that secondary. Maybe Lou Dort will become a good secondary option. He can become, maybe he can work on his shooting. You know his defensive is just insane. But if he can get his shooting up to just like a, a medium level, he'd be like an all-star almost because his defense is just all, so good. And yeah, like I said, we just need Poku to do what he's... People keep... I don't really understand Poku. People seem to be enamored with him, especially on the ringer. On the ringer, they talk about him like every single time. They talk about the Thunder like, Poku, he's going to be the best player ever. And I'm just... I don't understand it because I haven't seen enough to really show me that he can even be better than decent he has these little flashes here and there he'll like drop 18 one game with like eight rebounds and then you're like okay maybe this is what they've been talking about and then the next game he'll drop two with like negative rebounds and you're just like why and then the next game he'll drop four and one rebound and then the next game it'll be seven 
And then the next game, it'll be zero. And then, you know, a month later, he'll finally drop another good game, but it's just not consistent enough. Who knows? Maybe he's just too skinny and needs to put on some muscle, you know, get in the weight room. But yeah, that's really the biggest thing. They need to get more shooting on the perimeter, uh, work on these guys that have the potential. They just need to unlock it. And the Oklahoma City Thunder will be good after that. They they have a lot going for them. The draft picks, they got the young talent, they got the good coaching, they got the best shooting coach in the league, arguably now. It's all on the up and up for the Thunder. Um, they got the best GM in the game. I'll say it. Sam Presti is the best GM, in my opinion. Like, I don't see other GMs making moves like he does until after he does it. And they're like, oh, let's try that, Utah. But yeah, just a good good, good time to be an Oklahoma City Thunder fan. Tickets are super cheap, so if you want them, go get them. And now for our breaking, 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 breaking story. Story, story. Breaking news. Frank Reich is out as head coach for the Colts. Um, Adam Schefter reported that this morning on ESPN. They're 3-5-1. and five and one. They got a tie. That's how bad they are. They benched Matt Ryan for Sam Ellinger, and they fired their offensive coordinator already. Their head coach was hired in 2018, and he has not done very great since then. Basically, he kind of got a crap, a crap shoot. He had Andrew Luck, and I'm sure he was like, man, this is going to be great. I got like a franchise quarterback already. He's at least got five years left. He's young. I'm going to rock this out for at least five years. And then if we suck after that, oh well, I'll have five good years and I can move on to the next place. But unfortunately for him, Andrew Luck decided to retire as soon as he started. So he's had a different quarterback every single year that he's been coached since Andrew Luck left. And I feel bad for him, but you know, you gotta win. You gotta do what you gotta do. And he hasn't really performed according to the bosses, so sorry, dude. It's kind of weird seeing the Colts being this bad, too, because I grew up during the Peyton Manning era where they were just nonstop amazing. You got Peyton Manning and uh, I forget the guy's name. It was like Bruce Wayne. It's not Bruce Wayne. That's Batman. Wayne, Bruce. I don't know the guy's name, but he was good. I feel like Wayne was in his name, but I can't remember. But he was good. He was a good receiver. And Peyton Manning was just dropping dimes to him. That was a golden era. You could get Peyton Manning on Madden. He'd be 99 and everything, but his speed would be like 30. So you could like had to stay in the pocket, but you could just throw it perfectly every time. It was great. But anyway, yeah. Sorry, Colts. You'll probably find a better coach, to be honest. Maybe it'll be a new beginning. Maybe you guys need a new GM. Maybe that'll improve your drafting. Who knows? I don't know if it works the same in the NFL as it does in the NBA. But it might, so you guys should figure it out. And lastly, one exciting fact to leave you guys with. They just found a new type of life in Antarctica. They were drilling down, they hit a rock, the rock broke up, but they found that there was a bunch of different life forms living on this rock. Um, They were like sponge-like creatures, and they don't know how exactly they're alive. Um, They basically break all the rules of living. They're so far away from sunlight that they can't be using photosynthesis. Um, They said that the nearest, like, point where photosynthesis photosynthesis is happening is, like, 900 miles away. Um, They're also in a place where there's not enough underflow for them to be eating. Because basically the way a lot of, like, sponge-like creatures live, I guess, is that they kind of just filter so, like, food will pass through, and then they they just pick it up and filter it, and that's how they get their nutrients. Um, but they said in this area, it's so remote, there's not enough living creatures going by. So they're not even getting that. So scientists are just really confused. They don't know how these creatures are eating. They don't know much about them. They just discovered them. They know that they're sponge-like and that they're pretty much sponges, but they just don't know how they're alive, so... Do with that info what you will. Um, Anyways, guys, that's going to be all for this one. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and subscribe. Watch it again. Do all the things that you do. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. I'm just getting it out, I think. I'm just getting it out. Oh, oh, oh.